Now, you know what, let's, let's start a little conversation. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be on the computer a lot just to take notes as people are talking. Because um, a lot of this was just feedback and ideas. You know, nothing is set in stone um, in terms of what we're headed, where we're headed. We've got issues with the facilities. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different possibilities of, of working them out. Um, but one of the reasons that this topic is pertinent at this point in time, there's actually two reasons. Uh, the first one is that the state, um, I don't know if folks know, the state uh, legislature a year ago had begun requiring PCB testing in all buildings. Um, and buildings typically that were built prior to 19, 1970 um, are likely to get hits. Um, we lucked out, uh, we've got two buildings that are in that category, one's Brookfield, one is, is this facility here which also includes the tech center. They did do the testing in Brookfield, that came back clean. Um, doesn't mean that there aren't PCBs present, um, but what it means is that uh, my guess is, is that the ventilation is so good after we upgraded things from um, COVID that you know it's an air test that they're looking for the PCBs in that the ventilation is probably good enough it's clearing it out I don't know what's going to happen here um, they bump back the PCB testing until 2025 the problem is is the way the law is written if you get a PCB hit it has to be remediated immediately and at, at pretty significant costs um, to that remediation especially looking at two of the schools that are going through through it right now um, so then the question became, the superintendents kind of talked with the legislature a little bit and said, you know, you guys as a, as a state and as a legislature, there, there's been no construction aid for schools and time out of mind. Um, so is there a way to combine this need to kind of revamp facilities across the state um, along with the PCB piece so that, you know, we're combining the two ideas so that why would you want to pay, you know, 10 million to, to, to remediate PCBs in a school that probably should just be rebuilt anyway? Um, and so they've kind of pushed the PCB piece out of the way a little bit um, with a stronger focus on construction aid. So what does that have to do with us? Well, construction aid means that if, if we're in a position where we want to do a major renovation or need to do a ma major renovation or we want to do a rebuild, um, they're going to come up with matching funds. How much? I don't know. Um, previously, when I look back through the history of Vermont, when they were providing construction aid, it was anywhere from 33% to 50% of total cost. And so, you know, with that possibility floating out there, you know, I was always brought up, if you can use other people's money, you know, to get stuff done, that's what you do. And if there's the possibility that, you know, if we're looking at a major overhaul or a, a rebuild here, um, and possibly the opportunity to have somebody pay for a third or half of it. You know, we, we've got to have the conversation, especially given the state of things. Um, in terms, before we kind of, I start to pick your brains a little bit, in terms of just de general information as I was looking through things, and this may not be perfectly complete, it's based on the records that I could find. Um, this high school, RUHS, um, it looks like it was dedicated in, in 1956. Um, so it's about 70 years old. About 10 years later, in 1966, uh, the population was increasing and it got large enough that the, the building wasn't big enough, and so they started to go out to try to see if they should build a middle school. Um, the, the, the votes to try to build a separate middle school failed, um, but they did make the decision that they were gonna add on to this school. So we have a middle school section here, right? We've got, that's part of why we've got the two gyms. You know, one's from the RUHS, one's from the middle school wing that was built on in 1966. There have been no major renovations um, in this building since 1966. Um, the other couple of pieces to throw out there for data as I was kind of looking through, um, you know, what happens across the country. Um, in the U.S., on average, schools uh, are renovated every 12 years, so major renovations to them. And on average in the U.S., schools are replaced about every 44 years. Um, right now, 76% of the schools across the country are considered to be in good or excellent shape. Uh, we are not in either of those categories. We're in the fair category, so we're in the bottom bottom 25%. Um, the other piece that was interesting 
was that as the state was doing an examination of um, what state the facilities across Vermont were in, um, they did a pretty big study because they were trying to figure out should they, you know, redo the construction aid um, piece. Uh, what they discovered through that work and coming out and kind of doing surveys and facilities assessments um, was that this high school is the one across the entire state that they deem to be the closest to the end of its useful life. Um, so we, we've got that distinction out there. And then the other piece that's out there is we don't know about what the results of the PCB testing um, are going to be until probably 2025. Um, so a part of trying to get people to come here tonight, the goal was really to, to, to give folks a couple of prompts and I just listen and, and take notes to be able to use that information to create a survey that I can send out to the greater community. So um, before we start that though, um, it might help if any of the three of you have any specific questions about the facilities as they currently stand. Um, you work here, I know that. <laughs> I know the other folks are probably familiar with the heating issues that we had this year. It's, it's been 13 years since my son graduated, so yeah. it's, oh, I haven't really kept up with things. Yeah. I don't know if you, if you had any kind of questions about the facilities as you currently stand. I just wanted to get a feel of what the meeting was, I, I've been hearing things, now. I, I'm not. And you I'm can, not and this is, we can be as blunt and open yeah, and honest. I'm not, a, I, I'm not a Facebook stalker, I yeah. just hear things, <laughs> I hear, where I work I hear a lot of things. and. I just want to know. Um, I just want to know where we're at and that what what roads we could take to get to better either either improve with what we have or. Yeah. I, mean, I heard building a new school and right away everybody's like in, it's like tearing open an ant hill and everybody's just like scurrying around trying to. Yeah. I just want to. I just. I guess I want to know is, is uh, how bad things are. And um, are they fixable for now? Um, so, keep going. And, well, you know, head count. How many people, you know, throughout the years, enrollment's been going down? Here or not? Here or not? With the exception of the last, this last year. So, we can talk about that. Okay. So that's a good point. So, then that, I mean, you know, so, so I'm like, why? Why build a new school if the numbers are, are done? Okay. So what has happened, um, I started about six years ago when I walked in the door, um, Brookfield and Braintree, especially the two smaller schools. I think Brookfield was, Brookfield was about 37 to 40 kids. Um, Braintree was probably 60-ish, give or take. Um, and so we actually had that discussion and I upset a whole bunch of people just by having the discussion about, you know, should we be consolidating those buildings? You know, we got space over at Randolph Elementary, should we be shutting down those facilities and having the students come to, um, you know, Randolph Elementary because there'd be a significant savings in terms of taxes at the time. And as is normal across the country, you don't mess with local elementary schools. Um, so people wanted to make sure that they were, was, was preserved. So at that point in time, I talked with the community and said, look, I said, we'll do what we can to try to increase enrollment. If you're not supportive of this, that's fine. We're going to try to increase enrollment. And depending upon what happens over the next couple of years, we'll come, we might come back and have this conversation. Well, Braintree um, is up. It'll, there'll be over 100 next year. Um, Brookfield is up, it will be probably mid-90s next year. So they've, they've doubled to tripled their enrollments. And of course, those students trickle into this building here. Um, Randolph Elementary has been stable. Um, they get a, a they'll, they'll go up a couple of kids um, one year and go down an equal number the next year. So their, their, their level has been stable. As far as the high school is concerned, um, there's been swings up and down due to COVID. You know, when COVID was bad, everybody pulled their kids out, went homeschooling, COVID, you know, uh, COVID went away, everybody kind of came back in the school, so the enrollments went back up. But the interesting thing that we've got going on here is we have a significant number of students from outside of Randolph, Brookfield, and Braintree that pay tuition to come here. 
So we bring in about a half million in revenue um, every year from the tuition payments of students that want to come here. So our enrollments in, in Randolph are going up a little bit because of what's happening at the elementary schools. Um, even though those, the bulk in those populations, they started out in the lower grades and they've been slowly working around. But a lot of the population increase that's happened here is from students from other districts that have come. Now, we had had our controversies at the beginning of this, uh, at this school year, um, which, you know, we're probably going to see students that don't want to be here, and I can't blame them um, after the controversies that, that, that we had. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, we went through three months of death threats um, from across the country here um, for holding, enforcing the, the, the state's LGBTQ laws and things like that. And so that's left some students. So I, I expect to see um, a number of students probably leave this year and then in a, in a year or two to, to have a resurgence again as things have calmed down. Um, so the overall projection, at least for this area, is things are, have been on the rise um, you know, for six of the seven years that I've been here. I expect to see a dip because of the controversy at the beginning of this year, which I expect to reverse. Um, in terms of the overall status of the building, um, it is getting close to the end of its useful life. Um, we don't have areas uh, with the exception of the field house, which is why we're renovating it now, that I will say are unsafe. Um, but we do have sections of the building that just aren't conducive to properly educating students. Um, we've got an aged science wing um, that at the very least, if nothing else happens, and that's a major job in itself that needs to be completely renovated. We've got new programs that we brought into the, the district um, to help kind of support the kids. So we've got a, a three quarter of a million dollar STEM and robotics program that we have brought in over the last couple of years. And the spaces aren't quite right um, for that kind of work. Um, we, especially over at the tech center, because this, this rebuild or renovation could potentially include the tech center, um, as we've been putting in more technologically advanced programs over there like advanced manufacturing. Um, we're finding that that old infrastructure just doesn't support the equipment. We don't have the electrical supply that we need. Um, it's not in the right phase. And so, you know, every time we have to upgrade those things um, that would be a normal part of a new building, you know, it's 300,000 here, it's 200,000 there. And so, you know, while it's not as expensive as a new building, it adds up and it's, it's a yearly cost. The heating um, piece when the, the, uh, the pipes uh, that carry the hot water under the ground out there failed, um, that was a $350,000 you know, uh, work that we had to do to get that up and running. and had to do it in quick time to try to get the kids back in school. Um, we have constant pipes that burst um, and we end up shutting down school for a day when that happens um, because of it looks like it's been improper repair of the plumbing over time. Um, folks coming in, you know, when they cap off the end of a, end of a pipe, instead of using the cast iron um, screw piece to put in there, they've been putting in plastic, which fatigues and wears out and then bursts. Of course, they're in the walls, so until they burst, we don't know. Um, and so it's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of that. We've got a whole wing of the building that is almost uninhabitable during the the spring and summer months just because the heat up there gets to be too hot and we don't have the electrical system in grid in there to be able to support at least bring in an air conditioning um, to be able to cool it down. So there's a, there's a lot of parts and pieces that just in general would need to be would need to be fixed. Um, and so then the question becomes do we rebuild, do we renovate, you know, do we take a look at Vermont Tech if they're shedding some of their buildings and, and potentially buy the buildings up there and move up there. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of discussion on the table of, of what's possible and what, what might be. Um, so, But I'll, let me stop talking for a minute and, and give folks a couple of prompts and an opportunity to kind of chime in. Um, and again, any questions that jump up along the way that you want me to answer about this, I'm happy to answer. Um, but start off with the basic, you know, what, what are the thoughts that the three of you have, um, either for or against new construction. Um, be, be, and you, blunt and honest, I mean, I have no investment in this other than I got a school, I got a, I got a building that we got to do something with. 
and I want to make sure that I'm in line with the, the community in terms of what we do. I guess I'm uh, taking it mostly just to listen because I yeah. don't know a whole lot about it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm private person that kind of looks at the long run, and if you know if it's going to be the five hundred thousand here, it, you know, every year type thing, but, you know, maybe it's worth it to do something new. Um, I'm kind of intrigued the idea you just mentioned about VTC buildings. Yeah, v VTC is intriguing. Um, because as they've kind of cut back, as they've done that reorganization for the colleges, um, they've been kind of get each each of the state colleges to kind of specialize in, in, yeah. a, in a set of uh, degrees so that it's not replicated at all the rest. Um, so they're finding that they're able to give up some of their building spaces. Um, it would take a study to see w if it was cheaper than rebuilding because it wouldn't just be purchasing the land, that would have its own cost. But the buildings that are available, you know, might have to be renovated then to suit our yeah. needs anyway. Um, and so, but that's definitely a part of the study that we could conduct if that was on people's minds to investigate. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, the state legislature could also, instead of having to buy the land, you know, say as part of the process to help the district, you know, give them the land in the building. And that's actually worth investigating. That's why we have these conversations, because folks have good ideas we can investigate. And I'm telling you a whole lot more than I know at this point, too. So. Nope, it's just, it's, we're, all, we're all just thinking right now. Um, and trying to, trying to get a feel for things. So, so thoughts that you have? Yeah, well, I guess just more questions. I mean, if the decision is made to replace the buildings and stuff, you know, you're not going to do that over the summer. Um, so, what happens to the? You know. So there been a there's been a couple of thoughts out there. There is adjacent land. Um, you know, Heather was actually pretty good about having people kind of investigate that a little bit just to try to see what possibilities might be. There's 30 acres that are right off the side there. The question is, is you know, are they? We need an engineer um, to kind of go out there and also check the zoning to see if it could be useful um, you know if we purchase the land to build on it the other possibility is to use what we've got we've got to keep this site active um, if a rebuild was done because we need a place for the students to go and to go to school yeah right um, and so the other possibility again it would take the engineer to come out and, and do the survey and give us feedback on it but we build the new building on the back athletic fields so while that construction is happening, we can still use this building. When that construction is complete, we move the kids in there. This building comes down and the athletic fields come to the front of the building, which would actually solve another problem that we, we've had is that those athletic fields need to really be <sighs> cared for the way that they should be. Um, you know, with the kids out there all the time, the, the soil gets compacted and so that, uh, you know, it's more likely to have injuries. It's not quite the right grass out there anymore. Um, so it's an opportunity to restart that. You know, and then we can talk about wild ideas that if we do a rebuild like that is the idea is, you know, do we want to put in a track that we've never had? You know, it's an opportunity. Maybe we want to put in a turf field or, or even if we don't put in a turf field, maybe we put up lights at least on the athletic fields that we have so that they can be used later in the evening by the community um, and by the rec centers. Um, the turf fields are great. You know, if you're going to spend, you know, $100 million or $75 million on a rebuild, you know, why not spend another, you know, $1.2, $1.4 million to get a turf field in there? And then because we're central in the state, we become the place that all the athletic teams across the state come to for their, their end of season tournaments um, and charge them a little bit to do that. So there's, there's a tremendous number of possibilities. Um, but again, those are some of the things to kind of talk about as well as, you know, if, if, if we do do a rebuild, what are the priorities that the community has? You know, what, what, what do you think is, is vitally important that, that that district or that building has? Do we want to step that's something we should prioritize. You know, you know, do we want to track and field? Um, and so those are questions more, more, more for, for, for the folks here. Um, so I'm putting. I'm curious. You mentioned a, a potential 30 acres that's next door. Where is that? Is that? Just I, th I think it's the Johnson's farm right behind. Oh. 
or it's, or it's adjacent to the Johnson Farm. So as, as you go that way across the athletic fields. Okay. Um, so over the over the main street and near the old um, Stallion Inn. Close to you know the is it, it's where the solar array is. Oh, that's on the other side. Yeah, um, it's on the other side of the river. Is that a river? It's Brook. Brook. There's Brook. Yeah. There's Brook. It's on the other side of that. Okay. It's, it's undeveloped land, with the exception of the solar array. All right, so it's around the solar array. Yes. Got it. Um, yeah. Um, it's a good piece of land. It might be a good capital investment. You know, because when you talk about what Lane's saying to become a hub, a centralized hub for people to come for sporting events, let's say, we currently don't have the parking to accommodate that. So it's not just, you know, we have to be thinking about, okay, you know, what's our vision? Um, what's our brand? You know, and uh, there's other things that have to go along with it. You know, do we want to increase access to affordable housing in the community? Um, there's a desperate need for housing. You know, how might we utilize our tech center to leverage opportunities to build housing? Things like that. Like, like, do we want it? Uh, if we're looking for vision. We're looking for ideas so that we act in accordance with like a five-year or a 10-year strategic plan. And we have, we, I mean, we have our own ideas, but our ideas don't matter. It's the, what matters is the ideas that the community has for what it envisions that it's 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 building and its school should be doing for the community and that's that's a part of the conversation you know what what things do we value what things are going to help these kids get as far in life as they possibly can but you know the the piece that we've we've talked about was there was an old program in the state of Vermont where um, the state gave some seed money which we still have sitting in an account from long before that I was here that was used to actually go out and purchase houses in and around the town that needed to be reworked and then the tech center students would go out and would revamp the house the houses would be sold the money would be used to go and buy the next house revamp it um, and then sell it again and through that process over time we were updating the housing stock um, because that's been one of the critical problems in in getting more students and getting staff to come to the district is we just don't have housing in this area and, and what we do is, is, is aged and, and needs to be reworked before people are going to find it, you know, something that they want to buy. So, but, so there's, there's possibilities there. So, you know, if we bought the 30 acres, um, even if we didn't build the, the school there, if that's our intent, it might be we could work with the technical center to actually build a community of affordable housing. Um, you know, nice brand new um, that, that, that people can move into that will actually help get the, the population up a little bit around here. Um, schools in this this uh, state they, they survive based upon enrollments. You know, if, if the enrollments are staying steady or they're growing, the school's going to perform well because the more students you have, the more funding you get from the, the more students you have, the more funding you get from the state. Um, and so, the more students that, that come here, the more we can build things. You know, if if the enrollments are going out you know, the revenue that we get declines and then you end up having to cut stuff. We've been able to build things um, without charging the community more for the last couple of years because our revenues have been increasing enough that I'm not having to ask for more in taxes. Um, your taxes have gone up because your property values have changed, but in terms of what the school has done, I've actually brought your taxes down in the last two years in a row, um, at least on the school side of things. So. Um, but ideas, I know it's tough in a, in a small group. If gut check, rebuild, renovate, leave it alone. And everything is okay to say. It's, this is not a... I found it interesting what you said about, uh, you know, the average lifespan of the average high school in this nation is significantly less than we are. No, like I said, um, like we, they did the survey, they came in and, and inspected the facilities and, and when that group got done, um, they had, it was a group of consultants the state had put together, we were the school that was targeted as number one for being at the end of its useful life. And, you know, I think we experienced a little bit of that, that this past year. 
if we were to, to rebuild stuff, um, folks' feelings on priorities. You know, do we prioritize athletics? Like I said, do we do we look at a turf field? Do we look at um, do we look at a track? I had some other ideas that other folks had talked about. You know, a STEM wing. The other one is a child care center. You know, do we integrate that into the into the school that serves both the community um, as well as would help us uh, retain staff? Um, because we've got a lot of staff that we cannot hire who do not hang out because there's no child care in the area, right? And so when their kids are out of school, off in their own home district, they have to stay home, they miss a day here. Um, it makes things a bit messy. But as, as you know, that also ties into the uh, affordable housing. Yeah. yeah, because it's something that we could integrate a little bit with the tech center. Um, it's really one of the problems with it is, is the, the child care piece is so highly regulated. The rules are so crazy that, you know, we couldn't just have the kids do it with a teacher. We'd still need an extra body or two. But if the benefit that we're getting, you know, in terms of getting a highly qualified staff to come and stay, um, it, it's probably worth the outlay um, because it costs a lot of money when there's turnover. Um, just, just out of the curious comparison, um, how old is the elementary school across the street? Which one? 1995. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Our, our, yes. Our, ours. They're, they're a little. Say that again. 2000. It yeah. Was built in 1995. They're, they're a little, it's a little. It's a little. Oh, no, 2000. Oh, but it has the cornerstone. Oh, that yeah. probably was when they started. That's when it started, it, yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah it's, the only reason yeah. I know is because we moved here in 2000, and it was a brand new school they were just moving into. Yeah. I see. That, that's actually a beautiful building. It it's, is. Um, I know it's at least 20 years old because the roofs are good for 20 years and we just replaced the roof. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they, that, that's usually the, the hallmark for it. But, yeah, I know we'd even talked about, you know, the other, other piece. And, again, if people want to have input, again, there's not an agenda to it. These are things that have, have come up in discussion um, is, you know, if taxes are, are the biggest concern, which, which they should be in, in the state, um, is that there's also the possibility of consolidating. You know, if we were to be rebuild a new school, um, you know, maybe we bring everything together on one campus, right? So, you know, maybe you've got a, a central, central portion of the building that has all the things that are kind of common and shared, you know, your cafeterias, your gyms, um, libraries, things like that. And then there's separate wings off there, one's for middle school, one's for the elementaries, and then one's for the high school. Um, tech center, you know, if we did something like that, and these are things that folks have talked about in other meetings that, that we've had, is so you, you get all the, all the students here on one campus. Um, there's cost savings because you're not managing the other, other uh, having to maintain the other two buildings. Um, and then the possibility is that the tech center then moves over to Randolph Elementary School. We renovate Randolph Elementary School to accommodate the tech center. Um, so those are other, you know, possibilities that have been discussed. Um, but I'm talking too much. You guys got to give me some ideas. Give me some knows what's going on. Well, we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you think that. I just, I, I play it really well. <laughs> uh, well, we're supposed to believe that. Yep. Thoughts, ideas, concerns? Be honest. I, I personally um, would like to you know, see the, the other, other people's money that's out there. You know, you, you, what you were saying, does that go for a renovation as well, or is that just for rebuild? It, it can. Okay. Yeah, it can. And the renovation might work. Um, the, the, the next po uh, step that should be taken is a study. You know, we get an architect, we get an engineer in here, and we ask them those questions. Is, okay, if, if we were going to try to renovate this current space, um, what would the cost be as opposed to building new? Sometimes it's cheaper to build new, sometimes it's not. It depends what, what they decide they need to renovate. I think the complicating factor and the thing that might get into ramping up the cost of renovations is right we've got to we've got to redo the electrical grid that supplies the schools 
Um, a lot of the plumbing probably has to be redone given the state of the, the pipes that we're bringing the hot water in um, because that same system that uses the hot water for the heat also provides the hot water for the sinks. And so if, if those pipes were degrading, it's likely that they probably have degraded throughout the whole building over the last 70 years. Um, and so, you know, having to rip through the walls to replace those, um, you know, you're talking significant expense. You know, if it were just a renovation where it were a touch-up, where, you know, they're changing the chairs in here and they're, they're, they're painting and the, the basic cosmetic pieces, that's a whole different story. That, that, that would probably be cheaper. But uh, the next step logically would be get, to get a, a group of folks in just to do a, a facility study and say, you know, based upon, you know, cost analysis, this is your best bet. Um, best bang for the buck and so that's something that I'll be asking for the board those are we have reserve funds which is which is good it means I don't have to go and ask for the taxpayers for more but but a, a, a good study that would answer all the questions that we need to answer including taking a look at what's possible up at Vermont Tech um, you know we're probably talking in the hundred and fifty thousand dollar range to, to do that work and have that study done but we also would have architectural plans and things that are up and ready to go at the end of it um, that could either you know, be used then and there or they could sit for a while until people decide that they want to pull the trigger on it. So, but yeah. so it, sound, it sounds like a let's, and the, which is a good, good logical piece, is let, let's figure out what, I would say let's figure out what the costs are for the possibilities. Out of gas, okay, it's out of gas, okay, gotta buy another car. Yeah, I want to see, I guess, what I would like to see is, is how much it would cost the renovation. You know, get a quote, yeah, you just like you know, just like if you're at your house and you want to do some renovation work, you know, ask other people to see how much it they, their opinions on how much it would cost and, and how practical it would be. You know, it's gonna cost cost more to fix than it would be to build new, like what you're saying, then, yeah. then that's a no brainer. Yeah. But if we can if we can fix, you know, or if we're not ready for it right now, if there's something we can do, I won't say to patch, <coughs> but something to, to better it, um, I, I, I personally would like to see that happen before building, building new. And it, it makes sense. So if I'm typing, I'm just taking the notes down to the stuff to follow up on, um, which is a good one. Um, trying to do some other thinking, brainstorming here. So the, the, the quirky part about this building is it's, it's very spread out. Um, and so part of the analysis will be, you know, heating and cooling. Um, when you got a building that's just this large, um, you know, the heating and cooling expenses can be, can, can be pretty steep. Um, typically, the newer buildings, you know, would be three, four stories tall, right? Because you get the heat rises; it's more contained. Um, in a situation like that, we probably would have been able to keep the the building open when the heating system failed, because the temporary heaters that we brought in, um, it w we would have been able to get the heat to more of the building from those temporary heaters. Um, so there's there's those thoughts as well that go into there. And then the other question is: is if we do renovation. Um, you know, is it worth it taking some of the land space to try and um, put solar out there, you know, and, and do most of the heating and cooling with heat exchangers? You know, if we can get, depending upon where, where the state is and how much they'll let us generate, they used to have caps on it. Uh, but, you know, if we could generate the majority of uh, the electricity we needed to run the heating and cooling, that's significant savings. Um, you know that's probably that's probably a million a year in savings to the taxpayers. Uh, that kind of an outlay. But thoughts on STEM? If well, things were renovated or rebuilt, what what would it look like? Oh, I I have to. There's experts. Think much more there. about it than that. But actually, what I was thinking is one less you know quantifiable thing is the value of having a walking village, right? So I, when you said, when we started talking about VTC campus, I mean, I, I, I think it's great campus, you know. Yeah. Um, my son went there, all that jazz. But, um, but I do know kids who like walk to Moto uh, for an hour and then come back for their sport practice. Um, you know, just, just having our school 
close enough that kids can walk downtown and back. Um, it's, I think there's value in that. Yeah, and it's, and it's a good point. They also, um, you know, they, they go into town, they hit the little coffee shop, they're spending a little money, so they're, they're, they're helping the businesses out as well. Um, so there, there is a good point to be made there. Um, I think VTC is just worth looking at just for the cost comparison. Oh, sure. um, my guess is uh, the buildings that might be available that they haven't been using, um, you know, that was one of the things that they were having problems with was the deferred maintenance. And so, you know, again, my, my biggest fear is that, yeah, there might be some beautiful things that we could do up there, but the cost to actually renovate and get the buildings up to the snuff might really push push the cost through the roof. Um, but we got to have the study happen to, to, to figure that out. Um, but yeah, no, definitely in, in checking in terms of, of what, a, what a full renovation, you know, would kind of look like. Um, so all we're, we're doing, we, we kind of did some background on the, and it's good to see you here, um, some background on the building and the facilities uh, that we currently have. Um, and we've been kind of brainstorming possibilities of things that we should be checking on and, and taking a look at and things that we might want to prioritize um, so that I can use that information to build a, build a survey to get out to the greater community. Um, and so what we've been talking about is, uh, you know, the need to, to check, get a cost uh, estimate as part of the study of, of what it would cost to renovate as opposed to building new, uh, potentially investigating what's up at Vermont Technical College um, to see as their college footprint is shrinking if there are buildings up there that might be quite viable to move the high school to. Um, and kind of the last comment that we kind of ch checked in on, which, w which was a good one, was the recognition that it's kind of nice, kind of nice in a, in a sense to have the students down, down here because they've got access to the town. We do have open campus um, for the, the students that, that earn it. So, you know, if they don't have a specific class, you know, they got, they got, you know, 45 minutes or whatnot that they can run over, grab a coffee really quick and whatnot and come back. I think that's an important so. point that you made. Thank you for that point. Yeah. Because there was, a, you know, the use risk behavior survey keeps coming back here that the kids do, do not feel connected to the town. They feel connected to the school, but in terms of feeling a connectedness with the town, that's been a, a difficulty um, over time. What percentage of students drive to school? Oh, that'd be hard to, hard to I, estimate. I, I, I would say the juniors and the seniors, it's the majority of them because the parking lot is full. I've, I've worked at, at buildings um, when I was a principal whose population was, you know, three times what the district is, and there were fewer cars in the parking lots from the students than there are here. Wow. Uh, yeah. Going way back when I was in high school, uh, they built a new building that was like a half mile away from the school, from the town. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there were certain places in the town where kids went to after school, and it made no difference in their business. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, we weren't allowed to leave the building, so there was no going into town for an hour. So. Yeah. You know, yeah. once you got there in the morning, you had to stay there. Yeah, I couldn't give you. I, I can. We could go investigate. I could probably find out real by first thing tomorrow morning. Um, my guess is the percentage is high um, for the upperclassmen, the juniors and seniors, the ones that would have licenses. I, w I would guesstimate 75, 80 percent. In terms of up here, a little ways. Yeah. You know, if they're going to drive anyway. Yep. It wouldn't be a big thing if you're not uh, this close. I got what you're saying. No, that makes sense. So if we got a lot of drivers and uh, you know they they still have that access to the village. Yeah. Um, in terms of. Um, Again, I'm not, not advocating for it, but it's, it's a worthy discussion if we're talking about making these changes. What is the general feeling of folks of, of, of consolidation of schools? So if we renovate or we rebuild, we rebuild one large building here and eliminate the other schools. Just for, it, and it would just be a cost-saving mechanism. That would be the only benefit to I it. I think you're gonna get a whole lot of static yeah. Um, I agree with you. Yeah. But I gotta ask the question. Yeah, I'm just 
Yeah. Uh, we've been here now 23 years, and you know, anytime it you know, is even a thought of doing something with one of those two schools, it's like you know, the world is coming to an end. Yeah. And their enrollments have been going up. Yeah. So. And I apologize for sit sitting down here. It's been a long day, so yeah. it's quite comfortable. <laughs> so I appreciate it by indulging me a little bit. Um, other parts and pieces, and then we can kind of turn to other things. Uh, other discussions that folks Just about the general idea of, of either renovating or rebuilding or relocating. Yeah, well, I don't, you know, I'm a general mention, I just assumed that a study you had it before you do any of this stuff would be part of the process. Yeah. So, so the next step potentially would be um, I want to get I want to get a survey out just to gauge the community's interest. My guess is is what I'm going to find is is a very similar. Yeah, we're interested, but what's it going to cost? Mm -hmm. Um, which is which is perfectly appropriate, and then that'll give the impetus. Don't lose your thought. That'll give the impetus um, to get the study done, um, to get the professionals to come out and, and do the estimates. Go ahead. So back in the December time frame, when we were looking at the heating issues and looking for additional spaces, I know that you did some exploration up at VTC. What kind of space considerations do you see as being a possibility up there? Uh, it'll it'll have to we'll have to have a good discussion with them because I think the context has changed right since that time. You know, you had the the state regents come out and say, "Yeah, we're getting rid of all athletics at these schools, and we're getting rid of the libraries," and since they reversed a little bit. And so I know that they're in a state of flux. Um, my expectation, and I'm, I may be wrong, um, but, but all, all things point to this, is that they've got their campus up there. They're going to need to shrink their footprint, right? There, there's only certain of those buildings that they will need to continue the operations at Vermont Tech. And that's assuming there isn't a decision made to just move the whole shebang to the Williston campus, right? Because that's that's where you know there's a little bigger population up there. They get they get more folks up there. If they shrink the the footprint up there so that they only need to maintain a couple of buildings, the buildings that remain, something needs to be done with them, and maybe those could be purchased um, as a replacement for the high school. And so we had talked uh, about two things. Um, it's a really kind of nice idea. They've got nice fields. Um, they've got pretty nice buildings. Uh, but the big questions for the, the, the study team would be, you know, how much do those buildings, um, would they need to be renovated to suit our purpose? Um, and I do know, like I said, as uh, their budgets got tighter, there was a lot of deferred maintenance on those buildings that weren't used as much. And so how much work are we going to have to do to get those up to speed? Would it be more likely to be some of the dorm type buildings that are more accessible or to you to consider? and how readily can those be converted to classroom considerations? Um, I do know, I have not been in, in what, I don't know if they changed the name of it, but what used to be called the old dorm. Um, when I went to school there in 86, I did my first year there before I, I went over to Castleton. Um, the upper floors were the dormitory spaces, the lower floors were actually classroom spaces, um, which were pretty good. Um, you know, but again, you're, you're talking if that's still the, the state there, that building in and of itself might be large enough to do most of what we need to do um, that's, that's uh, now. for the high school. It would have to be, you know, converted. But, you know, there's other buildings there. You know, are they going to keep the advanced manufacturing building that's there? Um, or would that be something that they'd be willing to sell because that would be ideal for science and technology? Um, you know, we might even, um, you know, if we talk about the, the fact that the tech center needs to be renovated as well, maybe that's where the tech center goes. Um, you know, is the library going to be available now that they're saying that they're getting rid of um, the library because classroom spaces can go in the library um, as well as still have it serve that function? You know, and what about the field house? You know, they got the nice pool, they got, 
got quite a bit of equipment that I think it was David Walk was putting in at all the state colleges at one time. Um, so, you know, if we, if we had the old dorm, if we had the advanced manufacturing building, if we had the library that's up there, um, and probably the facilities uh, center, um, that would probably be a doable, a very nice doable uh, situation for uh, a transplanted high school. What's the age of the old dorm? What's that? What's the age of the old dorm? Uh, they seem to have taken fairly good care of it. It was an old, it was an older building when I was there, but it was pretty well taken care of. Like I said, I remember taking. Um, it was the elective classes that they offered through there. I took a lot of my English and, and my straight math courses there when I was there. Started early, like 40, 50 years is the life expectancy. Yeah. You know, is it already approaching that? Yeah. yeah. But that's a part of what the study would have to determine. You know, we'd talk with them. These are the buildings that we'd be willing to part with, and then they'd have to go in and take a look at them and say, hey, to make this a viable high school tech center, this is what you'd have to do, and this is the cost. And then we got that comparison versus renovating here or rebuilding here. A slight bunny trail, but my freshman year in, in high school, we were part of it. We, it was just freshmen, then the next year was freshmen and sophomores and so on. But I had English, um, Latin, and phys ed all in the same classroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we want to, one of the visions, and again, until COVID hit, and like I said, the 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 stuff that was going on earlier this year one of the visions was improving the academics to the point building some kind of magnet programs like the stem and the robotics um, so that it was an attraction to other students so that through school choice they were choosing to come here and we actually have been fairly successful in that you know if we had a nice uh, nice campus like that up there we could attract more um, you know, Heather's been, been pretty good at the, the technical center about trying to work on the programming. We were talking about bringing in plumbing um, as, as well today to try to build that tech center up as well. And if we can offer some programs in there that aren't offered at any other tech centers around the state, the students will come here um, to take advantage of it. And so the part of the game is, is, is making things attractive to get people to move here um, to attend the schools. Yeah, well, there, we, we at least have to do renovation. My guess is, is that we'll, if we come in and have people kind of do a survey um, and do that study, um, that's probably a year's worth of work, um, which isn't a bad thing because the state has pushed off till next year making a final decision on you know, construction funds, matching funds. And so those two things could align pretty well. So if they come back and say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll pay you 30%, you know, or 40% or 50% or to, to, to rebuild. Like I said, for me, that's a no brainer. At that point in time, I, I would go hard, hard, hard to get it going. If um, that construction aid doesn't pass, and again, I'm just talking about where my thought process is right now that's going to complicate things because then all the money would be coming from the local community and I do not want to put the community through that. Um, and then probably what I would switch to is more of a tact of, okay, we're going to do the renovation and we'll do it in stages. You know, it may take us 10, 15 years to get it all done, but we'll start off with the areas that need it the most. Right now, the areas that need it most are the science wing. Um, like I said, they're just not conducive to effective learning, and they're also in that area that's really gets really hot in the springtime. So that was part of my high school experience. That they were still building <laughs> while we were in school. Yeah, yeah. So, but that that's a pos That's the that's the kind of the backup plan. Um, so, but thought, thoughts and advice, and then we can kind of move on to other things. Was the conversation at least? Did you learn anything, or was it helpful? Yep. A little bit. Got some intriguing idea of hers. Yeah, and the the big thing too is um, hopefully as people walk out, as you're reflecting on things, if you have other ideas that you think are important, email, call me, um, so that I can get it on the list because it really does help me figure out the best way to ask the questions of the community, the bigger questions. 
Um, and then kind of separate from uh, the potential building and construction project um, is usually with the open forums is uh, we have time to just talk about anything that's on people's minds. Um, and so it, those are the things that, you know, if there's questions or concerns about the district, um, about, about any of the schools, about anything that's been going on, um, this is the time, and I, I'll give you the most candid answers that, that I can, um, if there's things that people are thinking about. It's always fun because when I say that, it makes people feel awkward. And then when they start asking some, some hand grenade type questions and re realize it's not a big deal, it, 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 people feel all right. I'm curious what's going on with the, the mascot. Uh, as far as I knew, there was nothing wrong with it, and all of a sudden, rating that uh, you know, we're all a bunch of whatevers. <laughs> so the, the mascot, um, it was interesting, and I think one of the reasons that the challenge kind of fizzled out. So there, uh, see if I can, let's start, let's start at the beginning. So the, the mascot itself, the galloping ghost, because I did a lot of research going back all the way to the, to the 30s, um, when the galloping ghost, I think it was probably closer to the 40s that the galloping ghost came on the scene, um, the galloping ghost was never a problem and was never controversial. They had had an original mascot picture that was uh, a grim reaper on a horse, basically a skeleton holding a scythe uh, wearing you know, a rope. Um, and actually, you can still see uh, an old copy of that on the, the plaque that's out in the front of the school. It sits out there by the parking lot of what that original mascot was. That mascot was in place right up until the 80s. And where the controversy, as far as I can tell, started was in the 80s, um, they started, the students started doing a contest, a yearbook contest every year with this question of, what does the galloping ghost mean to you? And so the students would draw pictures. And then those pictures would go into the yearbook. And so those were never the official image of the mascot, but they started to use them in and around the school. And some of them most certainly did, uh, based upon the shape and the conical hats and the conical hat with the guy with the sword and the colors. Some of the images that came up during those years, definitely I could see people saying, yeah, that's getting a little bit close to, you know, potentially, you know, looking like a KKK emblem. Um, so there is legitimacy to that, that claim. Um, my first year here, I believe it was, I walked into the middle of that controversy. Folks were, you know, it need, the, the image has to stay, the image has to come down, we need to change the mascot. And I was looking at what was happening in South Burlington and Rutland at the time where the, the two communities were ripping each other apart over the discussions about their mascots. And it had gone on for years um, and it was never settled. And so to try to save the community from going through that sort of acrimony, and I told the community in my communication, I'm just gonna, this is, I've never done this in my life, but I'm just gonna make a decision on this um, because there will never be consensus. This will be a fight forever. So the decision um, that I, I made was the image comes down but the name Galloping Ghost stays. So that image that they were challenging us on earlier this year, that image has not been in existence for seven years. So they were behind the times in their challenge to us because that's what they were concerned about. And it's like, I don't know why we're having this conversation because we've made a lot of progress here. The image is down. The, High school has been working with the students to create a new image, which actually is finalized. I don't know if you saw the picture today, um, but it is basically just the ghostly horse without the rider. And it's a beautiful picture. The kids had, uh, had two rounds of voting on it. The first one, um, the first couple of images they voted on, they actually kind of liked the idea, but they didn't like the, the images. Um, they didn't feel that they were ghostly enough. So this one hit the spot and has been approved by the kids, and so that one will be going up. Um, and so that's where things currently stand. So that image will be going on up in the field house. Um, you know, will be used on their gear if they want to. They also have the RU, which is a, a neat little symbol too that they can use. Yeah. So I heard from somebody who's my senior with about 10 years, been around here longer, um, and went to school there, just said, that originally it was something that 
Randolph was wearing t-shirts as their uniform in, in a basketball game back in the day, and they were swamp they were taking the court by surprise, and the reporter asked the coach, and they looked like galloping ghosts, you know, yeah. can I use that? And there there is no if if you do the the internet search, if you check the galloping ghost does not what you what comes up when you type that in there is nothing derogatory or connected with racism that, that comes up in those searches um, the images however if you some of those recent images from the 80s and 90s again that were never the official image they were images that the kids were creating for the yearbook some of those are pretty close to some of the actual images that the KKK was using back in the, in the, in the 30s and the 40s. And so there is, you know, when, when people are coming in and they're complaining about the image, yeah, there's, there's, there's a bit of truth to what they're saying. Um, and so that's the reason that the, that decision was made. But galloping ghosts have stayed. Um, the uh, big change has been the official image you know we wanted to actually go back to the original the skeleton on the horse and, and, and bring that back up but the reason that we didn't do that was because COVID hit and we didn't feel it was right with all the deaths that were happening with COVID to have a Grim Reaper as our mascot it just seemed very insensitive and so that's when they started to focus on the, on the, um, on the horse uh, so good, good question so again, it's not a perfect answer. There never will be one for items of controversy, but that, that's the best best that we had um, at the time. But yeah, good stuff. Other questions? Again, no, no topics taboo, so. Are you still tossing the thought of replacing the very odd here? Say that again? Are you still tossing the thought about about putting something equivalent to the very odd, the very auditorium in in the Randolph area that surfaced at a meeting back in February time frame? Um, well, there I know that Brian Reenville, um and I agree with him, was very concerned about the status of this auditorium. Um, it does need to be revamped. Um, there is uh, reserve money that could do it. We've held off the last year or two about doing any, any, we've done major construction when it was a safety concern. We've held off on stuff that's a little more optional, um, even though it needed to be done, because we didn't know about the construction piece. You know, we didn't want to put a million dollars into the auditorium if we were just going to tear the building down and in three or four years to, to replace it, it didn't, didn't, didn't seem wise. And so that's one of the reasons we're having these discussions now is because hopefully, you know, by the end of the summer, you will have a pretty good, clear vision of which direction we're headed in and know what we need to do. Because if we come back to renovation, this will be one of the first areas as long as, a, as well as a science wing that we'll be going after. In reference to the very auditorium, yes, this is an auditorium, I understand. Yeah. This, that got off, but I thought you were talking about saying Randolph is the center of the state and that's where there should be a new facility for all the state championship yeah. ball games. So that was what we, we talked a little bit about that in here, is that if we're going to rebuild the, rebuild the school, um, you know, for 75 or 80 million or, or whatever I can kind of estimate it might cost, at that point in time it might make sense to spend the extra 1.2 to 1.6 million to put in a turf field and lights. Um, so again, so that we're the central hub, so that at the end of season tournaments and things, they all can happen here. Because as one of the problems with Vermont is the travel, right? For the sports teams, you gotta, it's a three hour, it's three hours for some of the, when I was in high school, it was three hours to get to some of the people we competed with. But since we're dead center in the state and on I-89, you know, it would re remarkably reduce most people's travel time to get to those tournaments. And we could charge them, you know, charge them the fees um, to be able to do that and generate a little bit of revenue off it. And so, yeah, that idea is definitely a possibility. But it would, again, that will be, you know, a question in the survey to see if we if we rebuild, um, is this a priority? You know, at the very least, I would argue that we we should have a track, um, you know, so that we can have a track team and fill the track team. We got a lot of really good runners 
And the other reason that running and cross country running are so important is because you can all you're almost guaranteed to get at least a partial scholarship to most schools if if you're a decent runner. You know, there's not a lot of other sports in Vermont where the kids are coming out and getting you know big big scholarships, but running you always can. So it's a good thought. Yeah. So you confused me with the auditorium. Yeah. Stay. <laughs> not not really a stadium, but um, like I said, the the the, the turf field with the lights is a, is a good thing. Um, if you can manage it, is it good? Other stuff on anything? I do appreciate the time, and I know it's a tough. Tough time of the year, like I said, the, the attendance dwindles when we get to these the last two months of school. Um, but I've got some notes that I've been able to take down. There's some good thoughts that came up that were above and beyond, you know, what, what other groups had discussed that I'll be able to integrate. So I appreciate that. And if there's anything that that, that comes up, my email is right up on the, the website. If you have other ideas or questions that, that you want to ask that you didn't want to ask in the open forum, shoot, shoot them to me. I'm, I'm happy to respond and appreciate Great. So were you here anyway or did you come back? What's that? Were you oh, here? No, no. Yeah, I did go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But luckily I'm only a walk away. Yeah. So no, it's good. Go. All right. We good? No. Oh. Oh, it's nice nice to stand up and it was nice to yeah. sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.